She is Christina Corum, seen here with Diddy in Florida in November after he settled his deep and abuse case with ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura. In the end, Diddy's closest and most reliable friend turned against him by giving the police the proof they needed to put him in a life sentence. In 2020, Kristen Korn was named Cole's chief of staff, and by his own admission, she was his right-hand man. Despite not having her name on the indictment, reports suggest that she was one of the top supervisors in charge of carrying out and enabling the activities. Lil Rod James revealed all the dubious actions Christina took on behalf of Diddy, such as having staff members carry fanny packs full of drugs in case Diddy needed a hit. Ghislaine Maxwell and Sean Combs and Jeffrey Epstein have been likened to the litigation secretary. For background, Ghislaine Maxwell was the ex-girlfriend of Jeffrey Epstein, the late convicted. Since her conviction in December 2021 for assisting Epstein in the recruitment and trafficking of minors, she has been sentenced to 20 years in jail. The damage of being compared to her is indisputable. Christina would be the one who knows the ins and outs if anybody, according to a person close to the probe who spoke with the New York Post. This suggests that Christina has all the knowledge required to maybe ruin Diddy's image irreversibly. Let's examine Christina and Diddy's connection more closely, as well as the alleged crimes she assisted him in covering up. Diddy and Christina have been together for a long time. Her now-deleted LinkedIn profile states that she started out as a manager for Bad Boy Entertainment in 2013 and worked her way up to become a director in Cole's Enterprises Office of the Chairman, where the chairman was Diddy. She was elevated to Diddy's chief of staff position in 2020. In 2021, Diddy posted a photo of her on Facebook with the caption, Meet Christina Corum, chief of staff at Cole's Enterprises, to convey how important she was in his life. Christina, who goes by KK, manages my company and keeps everything in my life in order. For the last eight years, she has served as my right hand and has continuously shown her ability to carry out and complete tasks. Without her, I'm not sure how I could get by. My daily boss, who keeps my world going, and always has my back. That's really revealing. She watches out for me to make sure I stay out of those dark areas and smile every day. Since then, Christina has changed the name of her Instagram account and removed all of these posts. When 2024 rolls along, Diddy's career is in shambles. Serious charges against him include drugging, abduction, and pressuring women into the terrible beating of Diddy's ex-girlfriend Cassie Ventura is a case that happened in 2016. Diddy allegedly stopped Cassie from leaving a troubling meeting in a Los Angeles hotel room when she tried to. CNN was eventually able to get CCTV footage of this vicious incident. Christina was at the top of the list, according to a source close to the inquiry who even described her as a crucial player in the legal issues involving seeing Diddy comms, despite the FBI refusing to reveal the identities of the workers implicated in Diddy's crimes. Due to a large lawsuit that Rodney James, sometimes known as Lil Rod, brought, these issues have become worse. This case, which is said to be worth an astounding $30 million, involves Christina, who is close to Diddy in addition to Diddy. Lil Rod's accusations, which detail his experiences working with Diddy in 2022, and include charges of harassment, intimidation, and improper conduct, have alarmed and concerned the public. Lil Rod alleges in the complaint that while working for Diddy, he was put in a toxic work environment. According to the claims, Diddy threatened him throughout a series of harassing events that left him feeling uneasy and afraid. Lil Rod says that the harassment went beyond words and turned into physical misbehavior, such as unwanted touching and groping. These grave allegations raise concerns about the accountability culture, or lack thereof, 
Inside Diddy's organization, in addition to highlighting possible power abuses in the music business. The accusations made by Lil Rod are a sobering reminder of the widespread problems with harassment and misbehavior that plague many businesses, particularly those headed by influential people. The bravery needed to come out is crucial in a setting where victims are often silenced by power and authority. Lil Rod's choice to sue Diddy is noteworthy because it highlights a negative aspect of celebrity that many people would rather keep under wraps. The charges against Christina made by Little Rod are just one more wrinkle in an already intricate case. He says that when he told her about his worries over Diddy's actions, she brushed them off as friendly horseplay. This denigration of grave accusations exposes a worrisome culture of supporting improper conduct in addition to showing a lack of support. Christina's answer normalizes inappropriate behavior by portraying it as lighthearted or innocuous, which is a harmful mentality that may prolong abusive patterns. Lil Rod goes on to say that Christina even implied that Diddy's behavior was an expression of love. This is especially troubling since it confirms the idea that unwelcome approaches might be mistaken for signs of concern or desire. This kind of thinking is not only harmful, but it also has the potential to normalize workplace harassment, making victims feel alone and unsupported. Lil Rod's lawsuit is a component of a larger discussion over the power structures in the entertainment sector. It brings up significant issues about the ways in which these settings often encourage abusive conduct, as well as the involvement of those who choose to ignore it. There have been many controversies in the music business, and Diddy's empire doesn't seem to be an exception. This case has the potential to spur change by inspiring others who have experienced similar treatment to come forward and demand that influential people answer for their deeds. Furthermore, the accusations made against Diddy and the responses from his colleagues may lead to broader conversations about workplace harassment regulations and the pressing need for stronger employee rights. The present environment, in which survivors are becoming more vocal, indicates that reform is long overdue. Industries must take the initiative to develop training programs and set up explicit procedures for reporting wrongdoing in order to create safer work conditions. The accusations made by Lil Rod highlight the difficulties that many people have when speaking with influential people. Speaking out might be discouraged by a culture that often places more value on loyalty than responsibility and the fear of reprisals. We need to break down this culture of silence if we want to create a space where everyone is valued and feels comfortable. Harassment victims may battle emotions of guilt and humiliation, wondering whether they are exaggerating or misinterpreting the circumstances. Christina's remark demonstrates how the responses of others around them exacerbate this internal struggle. When those in positions of power or influence downplay or ignore concerns, they are sending a strong message that this kind of conduct is acceptable. It is imperative that the industry and its stakeholders consider the ramifications of these allegations when fresh information from Lil Rod's lawsuit becomes available. It takes a team effort to address the widespread problems of harassment and misbehavior, from top business executives to regular workers. Promoting laws that safeguard employees and foster an environment of responsibility is crucial to averting such events in the future. It is necessary to set up support networks so that people feel secure enough to report harassment. This involves creating a respectful and professional work environment, providing means for confidential reporting, and providing training on identifying and handling improper conduct. The entertainment sector also has to recognize how these problems affect society as a whole. High-profile incidents may provide a forum for talking about and questioning the standards that permit this kind of conduct to continue. Through these discussions, the sector can make significant progress in establishing a safer workplace for all.
Lil Rod's accusations against Diddy and Christina are only the beginning of a much bigger discussion about harassment and responsibility in the entertainment business. As more information becomes available, it is critical to acknowledge the bravery of those who dare to speak out against influential people. In addition to seeking redress for his personal experiences, Lil Ra's case might serve as a warning to others in the business about the long-standing problems of misbehavior. In order to bring about change, it is imperative that we pay attention to the voices of the marginalized and foster an atmosphere in which everyone is encouraged to speak out. Then and only then can we expect to build a future in which respect is the most important value in the workplace and harassment is never allowed. Even if there is undoubtedly work to be done, development is unavoidably necessary. The story doesn't stop there, either, as Lil Rod claims he was groomed into accepting all connection with Diddy by Christina and Diddy via a conspiracy. He even went so far as to liken Christina to Ghislaine Maxwell and Diddy to Jeffrey Epstein. This parallel, which emphasizes the depth of Lil Rod's belief in Christina's claimed participation in Diddy's dubious actions, is especially unsettling. Lil Rod paints a surprising and unsettling image of her cooperation, claiming that she consciously and purposefully helped to manage what he characterizes as a trafficking enterprise. Lil Rod asserts that Christina did more than just watch from the sidelines. He says she made a concerted effort to make sure Diddy could meet ladies. He claims she paid ladies to interact with Diddy and made sure they were constantly in her line of sight. This degree of planning raises major moral and legal concerns regarding Diddy's involvement in these purported actions and indicates a deliberate attempt to sustain her lifestyle. It is really concerning that someone in her position would encourage such conduct, especially in a field where power dynamics may result in exploitation. Lil Rod also claims that personnel at Diddy's estate, including the butler, cook, and housekeepers, were forced to wear fanny packs full of narcotics at all times, creating a terrible environment. This presents a dismal image of a company that put Diddy's whims ahead of the welfare and morality of its workers. The idea that employees were effectively serving as walking pharmacies to appease Diddy is illustrative of a very concerning culture that not only condones, but actively promotes drug misuse. This purported drug culture raises important concerns about the obligations of individuals in positions of authority, in addition to highlighting the possible risks that employees in Diddy's inner circle may encounter. If these allegations are true, they represent a flagrant disrespect for other people's welfare in terms of encouraging drug consumption and taking advantage of weaker people. Lil Ra seems to think that there is a structural problem in Diddy's orbit based on his claims and his similarities to infamous people like Epstein and Maxwell. Such claims have far-reaching consequences that have sparked debates about responsibility and the pressing necessity for in-depth inquiries into the behavior of Diddy and Christina. If these allegations are true, they might expose a pattern of conduct that puts people's safety and dignity in danger and emphasizes the need for industry-wide changes. Lil Rod uses similarities to highlight the seriousness of his assertions and to situate Diddy and Christina in a well-known story that is marked by exploitation, power, and a failure to stand up for those who are weak. This dynamic, which has been seen in a number of high-profile instances, emphasizes how crucial it is to make sure that those in positions of power are held responsible for their deeds and that their influence does not create an atmosphere in which wrongdoing may proliferate. The public will probably continue to consider the ramifications of Lil Rod's claims as the case moves along and further information becomes available. Diddy's career in public image might be severely impacted by these allegations, particularly in light of the fact that they point to a pattern of conduct that is both very concerning and predatory. Recent years have seen a significant increase in the discourse around responsibility in the entertainment sector, 
and incidents such as these might prove to be crucial in advancing calls for structural reform. If Lilrod's claims turn out to be true, it may encourage other people who have experienced similar treatment to come forward and force a larger reckoning inside the business. Workplaces need to be safe and courteous more than ever, and incidents like these highlight how important it is to put in place thorough rules that shield people from abuse, exploitation, and harassment. In conclusion, Lilrod's accusations against Christina and Diddy reveal a very unsettling situation that gives rise to serious moral and legal issues. The analogies to Epstein and Maxwell underscore the gravity of the allegations and the possibility of pervasive misuse of authority. There is hope that as the judicial process progresses, it will result in responsibility, justice for those impacted, and eventually a change in the culture that has led such conduct to go unchallenged. The entertainment sector has to address these problems head on and create a culture where everyone is treated with decency and respect. Christina employed a whole crew to ensure Diddy was happy, so she didn't simply manage things on her own. Lil Rod is pointing fingers and saying that Christina made sure other people were part of this crazy setup as well. One of these people was Brendan Paul, a failed basketball player. In 2010, he started out as a music producer for Diddy, but soon after, he was doing his personal chores. He became a member of Diddy's inner circle as a result of his duties, and he often shared photos of himself living the high life on Diddy's private plane. Paul, however, was one of the first people taken into custody when the FBI knocked on Diddy's door. When he tried to board Diddy's private plane in March 2024, he was detained at Miami Airport by officials who found white powder and edibles that had been tampered with in his luggage. From everything, simply to have these narcotics in your possession. And yet, Diddy hasn't been seen at home at all this morning. He was seen pacing outside the airport after his detention, obviously under stress. It should come as no surprise since he probably realized the FBI was after him and that his time free would be limited. It gets much more intriguing, however, so hold on. According to Lil Rod, Diddy used young Miami Aka, Kisha, as one of his mules. In April 2023, Kisha took a private plane from Miami to Georgia to deliver some pink cups, or lean, to Diddy since he insisted on having them, but his colleague Brendan neglected to pack them. This event is included in the complaint. So what action did Christina take? Soon after she contacted Kisha, Young Miami started transporting cargo aboard a private aircraft. According to Lil Rod's complaint, he even saw Diddy perform a few lines of the material. However, there's more. Furthermore, according to Lil Rod, Diddy used to boast that she wasn't the only one who gave Young Miami a monthly stipend in exchange for personal favors. He mentioned 50 Cent's former girlfriend, Daphne Joy, as well as Instagram star and health coach Jade Wren. Remember when Daphne and 50 dated in 2011 and shared a kid named Sire? Soon after his birth, their relationship fell apart, with Daphne accusing 50 of being violent. In the present, Lil Rod claims that Daphne participated in Diddy's dubious plans. 50 Cent couldn't help but add his usual trolling commentary. In response to the rumored participation of his baby mom, he uploaded an image of himself on Instagram holding an umbrella in the rain, smoking a cigar, and seeming totally unfazed. I didn't know you were a worker. You little worker was what his caption said. This is a motion picture. Fans couldn't stop laughing at the post, and many of them flooded the comments area with their replies. I told myself I would stay away from making comments, but this caption got me crying, one person said. Yep, it's official. He gives no S about anything, another person observed. In an Instagram post in reaction to the accusations, Daphne Joy said, 
I am deeply hurt by Rodney Jones' lawsuit refuting Lil Rod's assertions. It is a complete fabrication and a character assassination that I am an escort. To investigate all legal options against Rodney and his lawyer, I'm hiring a lawyer. She then accused 50 Cent of causing actual turmoil and disaster in people's lives in her response to his tweet. Daphne chastised him for supposedly mistreating her and avoiding his son's existence. Let's focus on your actual evil actions of physically harming and abusing me, she stated. You are no longer my oppressor. From now on, you will be dealt with by my God. With these last accusations against me, you have irreversibly ruined the remaining hope I had for you as a parent to protect our family. Forever and ever, you have shattered our hearts. Just now, the inquiry took a major turn when the feds received audio and tapes from the prosecution that would guarantee Diddy's long-term jail. We may make assumptions about the contents of those recordings, even if we don't know exactly what's on them. There may be a wealth of very damaging video accessible, since the indictment already said that Diddy had hundreds of concealed cameras around his mansions, surreptitiously filming visitors and workers without their knowledge. Christina was Diddy's right-hand lady, so she probably knows precisely where to get everything. Christina is in a position to be the prosecution's star witness because of the extensive knowledge she has about Diddy. The surprise is that Diddy intends to testify in his own trial as well. Come March, this is going to be one crazy ride, so be ready for what looks to be an exciting trial. What do you think of Little Rod's claims about Christina? Comment with your thoughts, and don't forget to click the bell for more updates. Like and subscribe. Lil Rod's claims have also been refuted by Diddy's attorneys, who call Lil Rod a dishonest liar and opportunist who is only seeking an unfair payoff. Lil Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a $30 million lawsuit, said Sean High, Diddy's lawyer. 